So I, I teach English as a second language. I don't speak English as a second language. Um, but thanks for that. Now, Caitlin, who's on the timer, Caitlin, if you could actually start the timer um, five minutes into my speech, that would be much appreciated. Um, allergic to bells. So, um, my name is Tammy Sussman. You might remember me from Vibewire's Fast Break back in March when the topic was I Am Woman and following my expose into female shame from menstruation to masturbation to my own inverted nipple. I was um, expecting to receive a life ban from the Powerhouse Museum, so needless to say, I was very chuffed and excited to have been invited back so soon. Uh, that was until I received the topic for today's event, Save the World. So admittedly, after I, um, I got that email, I felt a panic attack coming on, so I crawled back into bed, my body contorted into fetus position, clutching onto a pillow. That's what I do when something triggers my anxiety and nothing instigates angst like realising that you're 27 years old and you haven't even saved the world yet. <laughs> Not only that, I haven't even contributed to saving the world. You see, because I'm one of those people who wavers between extreme, extreme pride for having followed the creative path and extreme guilt that I didn't become a registered nurse who also teaches in remote communities where everyone is blind. <laughs> so as I'm there in my bed, just wrapped up in my doona, I, I obviously begin um, thinking about my, my friends who are out there, you know, getting shit done, making shit happen, saving the world, like actually saving the world, like um, my friend who's a doctor and she spends her leave um, curing tinea capitis in orphanages in Kenya and true story, and um, my other friend who, who'd studied social work and law, and she, she works, she's actually created a, a sustainable relationship between the Jewish and, um, and indigenous communities in Australia, serving to improve literacy skills in, uh, literacy skills in remote areas, um, and areas suffering hardship. So um, it's kind of got me thinking, what are those legends still doing being friends with me? So I sent them a text, um, hoping that their answers might help guide my speech today, and that text read, what about me, if anything, inspires you? In brackets, this isn't a joke. <laughs> um, and both of them wrote back with messages that essentially express that they felt that they could tell me anything, that, um, that I was honest, empathetic, non-judgmental, which is, was essentially a euphemism for we feel comfortable telling you our deepest and darkest secrets because we know that your deepest and darkest secrets are bound to be even more fucked up than our own. <laughs> like um, the time one of my friends called me up because she had to talk to me about something really embarrassing. So shameful and awkward was the subject matter that she said, I'm too scared to even say it. So I said, okay, well, what area of your life does it involve? And she said, my body. And I said, let me guess, you think your clitoris is too long. And she said, how did you know? I said, honey, this isn't the first conversation I've had with a girlfriend. Um, so she said, well, like, how do I know if it's actually too long or if I'm just being paranoid? And I said, okay, how about the next time I see you, I'll have a look at it and I'll give you my honest opinion. Because my friends know that with me, you'll always get an honest opinion. Okay, but no, she, she needed to know now. She was planning getting her sex on that night. She needed to know now. So I said, okay, well, we'll have to improvise. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to hang up the phone, you're going to take a picture of it, you're going to send it to me, and then I'm going to give you some feedback. Just make sure that your face isn't in the picture, okay? In case I happen to, like, lose my phone before I had time to delete it. So she hangs up, she sends me the picture, I look at it, I call her back, and I say, there's nothing wrong with your clitoris. Coincidentally, it looks very similar to my own. I thought that one would have a bit of a reaction, not so much. <laughs> Next slide. No, just joking. Okay, so a few months later, um, I was actually chatting to a male friend and he expressed that he was self-conscious about the size of his penis. Luckily for him, we were in the same room, so he didn't have to send me a picture, fuck the bell. Um, and 
so I said, okay, up you get, pants down, let's see him. And he didn't feel comfortable with this method. He instead opted for the, the thumb and index finger measuring system. And I went home that night and I wrote a poem, or I started to write a poem for him, and that, the title of that poem was, First of all, your penis isn't actually that small. So, because there's obviously more to it than just that, right? Um, so now that, that the bell's gone and I've covered, I've, I've mentioned menstruation, masturbation, inverted nipple, clitoris, penis, it's only fair that I talk about anus. So, um, so last year I did a gig and, after, and it, I'd just come back from Mexico and during that gig I referenced the fact that I had just recently been in Mexico and I'd referenced the fact that I'd contracted salmonella poisoning while over there and um, misguidedly used alcoholic wipes during this time on my anus, um, which, which resulted, fuck the bell, in, um, in some, you know, some extreme, uh, extremely painful, ever so slight, but extremely painful anal, anal lesions. And um, after, after my gig, I know, how's the food this morning? It's good. <laughs> After the gig, a young guy of only about 21 came up to me and he said, Tammy, your performance saved my life. I was like, how so? He said, I can't even begin to describe, but your performance just saved my life. Or was it changed my life? I don't know. Either way, it was pretty profound. <laughs> Which got me thinking, you know, that yes, some people do need their tinea capitis cured and other people, they do need um, their literacy skills improved in their area. And then there are others who just need to know that they're, they are okay, that they're not the freak they thought they were, that they don't need to go around carrying the shame with them, they can let go of that. And sometimes they need to hear that from a friend, or sometimes they just need to hear it from a verbose, crazy person on a stage with a microphone. So while I'm not, I'm not fully convinced, I'm willing to flirt with the idea that maybe I am saving the world one fucked up story at a time. <laughs> Thank you very much. People will leave today with a really good toolkit of, of actions to save the world. People just taking matters into their own hands. We really do have the power. To empower people to, I guess, feel comfortable in their lives. Connect that passion and talent I have. Don't just do one thing, do a hundred things.